Hello, boys and girls. How are you doing? My name is Teacher Andrew, and I really miss all of you. But I pray that God has been taking care of you, has been keeping you well, and for being in school. I pray that he has continued to take care of you in school, and you're also doing your part in school to be better each and every day. And today, uh, before we go to our Bible lesson, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn from you and to go through your word that is our money that us how to walk with you. As we go through today's lesson, we pray that you would help us to listen and to understand that which you're telling us and that Lord, we will also be doers of that word and also be witnesses to others of what you're doing in our lives, O oh God. So be with us as we go through this lesson. We are just believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, today's lesson uh, is about God providing. <clears throat> and before I begin, you know, I want us uh, to, you know, I want to ask a few questions. And these are the questions. How do you feel when you ask your parents or your guardians something and they say no? You know, how do you feel? Or how do you react? Mm -hmm. I hope you've answered. Another question. What if they tell you to wait? You've asked them, but they've told you to wait. How would you react to that? Or you ask them, and they tell you they cannot afford it. You know, what you're asking for, they can't afford it. How do you feel? And how do you react from that? And at times, they are genuinely, you know, telling you, you know, really, we are not in that place, and we are not able to afford that. Or you ask for something, and because they cannot afford the quality of your, or the, the brand that you're asking for, they give you something different. The same something different. So you're asking for a shoe, and you want a specific shoe, but it's expensive for them. They are not able to afford that. But they give you another. It may be a very nice shoe, but not the brand that you would want. You know, how does that feel? You know, would you still continue to insist that you want the shoe that you asked for? Or would you understand their uh, state of things at that moment? You know, as you think about those questions and how you would react to them, you know, today our Bible lesson comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 15 from verse 22 all the way to chapter 17, verse 7. And here we meet the God's people, the people of Israel, who are going through a kind of a scenario of the same, you know, that they needed some things in their lives. And as we begin our story in chapter 15, verse 22, it's talking about the children of Israel coming from Egypt. So the, uh, uh, let me paint the picture before that. You know, they've come from Egypt. God has rescued them from Egypt. They've come to the Red Sea, and God has made a way for them through the Red Sea. And they have come on the other side where they meet a desert. And now they land into the desert, you know, as, as, they, as they travel on their way to Canaan, the promised land. You know, this place is hot. You know, it is all sandy. You know, there are no trees, no grass. You know, not a place that you want to go and lie or shield yourself there. But even as they get to this place, one thing uh, I, would ask, uh, I would want to us to, to, to just remember as we are going through this lesson. You know, it's in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, that says that the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and, a, and, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. So as we think of them landing to the desert, what this scripture tells us is that God was with them, even as they get to this place and they find a desert uh, that is not the best place that you would want to be. 
And uh, in that instance, you know, they travel for like three days, you know, into the desert, and they find a place that has water. You know, they are thirsty. You know, the place is hot, and they need water. And they find this place which has good water. You know, they want to rush there and, you know, take a drink. But when they land there and they try, they realize that the water was bitter and they cannot be able to drink. You know, imagine the frustration that comes. You are longing for this water and then you realize, mm -mm, it is not good because it's bitter. And at this moment, they started grumbling, you know, to Moses and wondering, why have you brought us this far? You know, just to put us into a place where we cannot find water, we are thirsty, you know, and they are making a lot of noise. And uh, Moses knew what to do. He cried out to God. He prayed and asked the Lord to provide water for them. And God showed him, you know, a plaque of wood, which he told him to put into the water. And when he did that, the water became clean and good for drinking. Here's the place, one thing I would remind us, that the place they called it Mara, just to remind them that Mara means bitter, which because of the bitter water. But when Moses called to God, he did something and he provided water for them to drink. And that's what we find in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 25. And, and let me just read it, that Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became fit to drink. And so God provided clean water for them, even though the water was bitter. And they are satisfied, and they continue with their journey. And so we find them, you know, they set out from Elim, you know, and came to the desert of Sin, a place called the Desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. You know, this was about 15-day journey. You know, and at this point, the food was running out. They didn't have something to eat. And so, you know, God had already provided water, but the human that we are, they started grumbling again. And they asked Moses in, in Exodus chapter 16, verse 4 and 5, you know, you know, they started, no, no, not, not 16, and, uh, from verse 3. Let me go back there. Verse 3 is where they find, they start complaining bitterly to Moses that they don't have water. And in verse 4 and 5 of chapter 16, the Lord said to Moses, I will rain bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. Just listen and note. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So God promises that he will provide bread for them, which they had supposed to take enough for the day, you know, each day for six days. But for the sixth day, they are supposed to take twice because of the seventh day. Because as you... If you've read the Old Testament, you realize that on the seventh day, they were not supposed to work. They were not supposed to do anything. So that means they need to have food ready for the day. And so God told them, for the sixth day, take twice the portion so that you have for the sixth and for the seventh day. And so as you note from that part is that they are not supposed to keep anything to go overnight. They are only supposed to take it for that day and wait for the following day to get something fresh. You know, in chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, that evening, when the evening came, uh, the, the, the camp was covered, you know, with quail, which is the meat that God provided. And in the morning, there was a, la there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And this is the bread. And so God provided quail for meat and those flakes as a bread for them. And as he had told them to do, they started collecting for the day. And some of them obeyed and collected enough for the day. But some of them decided 
they were clever. And so they decided to take more so that they can keep more for themselves. And what happened? Do you know what happened in the morning when they woke up? You know, when they woke up, they found their meat was filled with maggots and it was smelly. So it was useless to keep it. If they had followed what God had asked them. You know, God wanted them to have something fresh every day. But they thought, hmm, you know, let's keep a little bit more. We might come tomorrow and find no, you know, meat. So let us keep for ourselves. And at this moment, you know, they have found God has provided food for them. You know, the first part we said he provided water from a bitter water, turned it fresh. And now they didn't have food and God gives them meat and bread for them to enjoy. You know, and they continued with their journey. And God continued to lead them. So the whole of Israel community set out from now the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as God had commanded. And they camped at a place called Rehidim. Rehidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. So they get to this place and there is no water. Now note that there was a stream that had bitter water, but this one, there was no water at all. It was a dry place. And they were thirsty and they needed water. And what did they do again? They forget what God had done for them and they started complaining. They started grumbling to Moses. And he's even reminding Moses, you know, why did you take us and our livestock, you know, from Egypt, where there is plenty, and bring us here so that we can die of starvation? You know, why do you have to bring us here to die for starvation? And maybe, you know, maybe they were even thinking, you know, if you needed to kill us, you would have killed us from where we were, than bringing us here to start dying because of starvation. We've already gone through hot place, it is dry, do you know, all these things are happening to us, and yet, you want to kill us like that? And Moses, in chapter 17, verse four, 1 to 4, you know, as when they are grumbling and uh, asking all those questions, in verse 4, then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. You know, people are so mad with Moses, and they are almost want to you know, kill him, stone him. And then the Lord answered in verse 5 and 6. Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take, it, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of, of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And so Moses asked again, yes, he's tired of being made noise to or being quarreled, but he's still, you know, praying to God on their behalf and asking God, what do I do? And God gives a solution. And he tells him to do, to strike, you know, the rock with a stick that he had, you know, the same stick that he did uh, use uh, at the Red Sea. And he did that, and the water gushed out of the rock. You know, and they had enough. God's promise was fulfilled. And everyone drank the water. And Moses called that place Massa and Meribah. Because people had doubted God by asking, Is the Lord with us or not? In Hebrew, Massa means testing. And Meribah means quarreling. God had kept his promise and provided food and water in the desert. And so, in our lesson today, we are seeing these people being provided food, they provided water, you know, the bitter water is turned to fresh water. So, that shows that God cared for each one of them and he was always there for them. And so, I would ask us, did God's people get anything from their grumbling. Is their grumbling gave them what they needed? We may say yes, but really no. Because it's until Moses 
stepped in and cried unto the Lord, then God provided for them. And how did he do that? From our story, how did God provide for them? You know, remember all those stories? I hope all of us, you know, can remember everything he did. And God provided everything they needed. God rescued them from Egypt. Not so that he can destroy them, but so that he can take them to where he had promised. They doubted him. They asked questions. They grumbled. They looked back. And they wanted, you know, asking Moses, you know, you'd have left us where we were because we had enough. But God still provided for them. And today, boys and girls, God still provides for our needs. What he has promised, he always fulfills. Our memory verse in, is, comes from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. That says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So do you have a need today, boys and girls? Do you have needs, you know, at your, in your home? But do you know what a need is? You know, before we go into our needs, do you know what a need is? A need is something that you cannot do without. It is something that you cannot do without. That is what a need is. And God is saying, that which you cannot do without, I will provide for you. So look up to me. Call out to me. You know, the way the children of Israel, you know, they needed, you know, food and drink of water is a need. And God provided for them. Even something else that we, we've not gone through in this story. You know, just thinking of them going through the desert for these many years. You know, I believe they didn't have, you know, even if they had a change of clothes. You know, they are growing each and every day. And it's, you know, I would sometimes think maybe their shoe grew with them or their feet didn't continue growing. But I, I believe they were growing because they were becoming adults for those who are young or those who are already older are getting older. So definitely there is a growth, a physical growth that was happening. But God sustained them. That means either the clothes were growing with them, you know, because there was nowhere to buy clothes in the desert. So that means God was really, really taking care of them. And today he's promising the same, to take care of our needs. And so as we do this, can you speak to God and tell him, that which you need. You know, I give you a few seconds just to speak, just to say what it is that you need. If it's that food, is that need uh, uh, of water, is that need of clothing, whatever it is that you need, can you say it to the Lord so that we can pray together and trust that as he has promised in his word in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, and as he has shown us in, in the example of, the, of, of his people, Israelites, let us trust together that he will do it for us. And so let us pray as we trust God to fulfill that. Our dear God, we thank you that many times we find ourselves at that position where the Israelites were. We forget many times how you provide for our needs. And many a times we grumble. We complain, we ask you questions because we think you have forgotten us. Yet, you have just come from providing a need that we really desired. And our prayer today is that you would help us to always look up to you, O oh God. You who owns all things and you who has provide, uh, pro, uh, promised in your word that you will supply all our needs according to your riches in glory that you have more than enough for each one of us, oh God. No matter how many billions we are in this world, you have something to provide for us. You did not create us so that we can just go through the world or this, this earth with nothing, but so that you can provide for the needs of our lives. And so how we pray for these boys and girls, Lord, 
whatever that they need in their home, you know, in their own personal lives, in their own uh, education, Lord, oh God, may you provide for each one of them. And we know as you have done it for the Israelites that you will also do it for us. How we look ahead to hear of testimonies of the things, the needs that you provided for each one of them, even for their parents, that you will provide everything they need to be able to take care of their children. Oh Lord, be with us, guide us, and keep us safe. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So boys and girls, let us always trust in God. He will provide for our needs. And even as we end this lesson, today, you know, being 20th of June, is the Father's Day, and we want to appreciate all our fathers. Thank you for all that you have done for each one of us. And we pray that many of you that will also continue to trust God to be able to take care of, our, of your children, of your families, that God will provide. As we have talked about God providing for our needs as a children, that he will also provide for you to be able to take care of your family. So trust in God and know that he will always be there for you. So for all the fathers, happy Father's Day. May God truly bless you. Thank you and amen.